Welcome back to a brand new video, TVF Gaming, jumping into another mod spotlight. You guys know the next several weekends we're going to have a Saturday and Sunday video. There will be an ARC mod spotlight. We're going to go over some of our favorite maps, some of our favorite mods. We'll have a couple top 10 lists. It should be pretty fun, but it's just going to basically give a little bit of love to the mod developers as well as show you guys some of our favorite mods and maybe even teach you guys something you guys don't know about the mods. Sometimes I'll show some INI stuff or I'll show some behind the scenes stuff of some of these mods so you can kind of see how they work. And this one is definitely one of the biggest and craziest mods there are. And it is an essential mod on all the servers we play. We always play with either Automated Arc 2 or 3 because of the fact that we don't like to sort our own stuff. This basically takes all of that sorting and a lot of the mundane tasks in Arc, gets rid of them so you can spend more time playing the game. This is by Blitzfire911. Excellent mod developer. He's also working on a couple other mods, such as a permadeath mod that was really cool. And then there's a dynamic structure mod that he's been working on that's excellent. And I believe he does streaming. I think we checked out a stream over on Twitch recently. Does a bunch of Minecraft builds. Very good uh, content creator as well. But let's go ahead and check this out. This is a big mod. So I'm going to try and keep the video as short as possible. Hopefully still teach you something. If you guys enjoy the video, hit the like button. If you guys have comments on how to improve this video or mods that you want to see in the future, put that in the comments down below. It helps us out more than you know. Huge shout out to the patrons can make all these videos possible. All right, let's get into it, man. I'm going to try not to go just overboard on any of the, the simple devices, but let's at least talk about the initial setup just for these so the, that everything else works kind of after that. We'll talk about each one of the devices individually, but the main, main setup, the main things that you have to have are the console, the vacuum, and one of the OCD storages. That's kind of the big thing to get yourself started in this mod. We tend to really set it up on our servers, kind of just OP and just all the different storage all across so we can find stuff really easy, but you really only need a couple OCD storages to get going, especially if you have a stack mod. So the first thing that you make is obviously the automated arc bench. This is where you craft everything in the mod. They're all unlock at different different levels, so it, it definitely is a something that's spread out through your progression, so you're not going to get a bunch of these right away. Like the polymer converter is way up at level 85, stuff like that. So it, it's definitely a well thought out mod in terms of the progression as well. But let's go ahead and talk about the devices that you got to get started with. The big one is the console. This is kind of like the brains of the system. This one is where you set up the structures that you want it to actually sort from. So if I hit manual sort right now, it's going to pull everything in any other device into this device. So there you go. Just sorted everything into here. And then if we want to go in here and tell it to exclude structures, we go here and we can either just select all and then just leave the vacuum because you always want the vacuum to be sorted like that. Boom. Close. Now it's only going to pull from that vacuum. But the biggest thing with this one, if you guys use the dyno storage mod, if you don't exclude your dyno storage, it's going to pull all your dynos into the storage over and over. We've done it so many times. After you sort a bunch of stuff, it's really frustrating, so make sure you do that. The vacuum, just like it sounds, there's a few mods that do something similar to this, but basically you just drop anything, and it's going to get picked up inside of there. So we'll go ahead and drop a whole bunch of foundations, and then here in a minute, it's going to get picked up. There are some things that it won't pick up. It doesn't pick up the dino storage balls, and eggs get picked up by a different device as well. So here in a second, it should get picked up. There you go. Now it's inside the vacuum, and then if we go over here and we hit sort, it's going to pull it into here. Now, like I said, the console is going to pull everything into it, but you obviously don't want everything in the console. Although it does have a large storage, you want it sorted out to the proper things. And you can set it up to refrigerators. You can set it up to the actual storage. It's pretty simple. Basically, you're going to go over to these different storage devices. In fact, let's grab a little bit of supplies. So we'll grab some crystals, some metal, that, that, that. We'll kind of sort this all out. So you've got three different storage options. Well, four t storage options total. You've got your the initial one that you can make pretty early on. I think you can make this almost right away. Just your typical o OCD driftwood. This, this one's pretty nice because it's very easy to set up. Basically, you put an item in there, and then you just hit Add Resources, and it's going to add everything that's in there to that list. So now Flint is all going to get sorted to this box. This next one is a little bit different. This one, you click Show OCD Menu, and it's going to give you the big menu of stuff. Let's go ahead and put something in there. Let's go a little bit of polymer. Now show OCD menu. We're going to click polymer, confirm. Now all polymer is going to be sorted to there. So that if you have stuff in here that you didn't want, so if you had stone and cementing paste, show OCD, we could come in here and unclick it. And then next time we sort, it's going to get pulled out of here. There you go. Boom. So it already got pulled to the console. So now the only thing that stays in there is just the polymer. So very, very cool. Next one is just another variation of that. Pretty much the same thing, but this one, you can just do the add resources to list, metal ingot added to list. So now that's going to get sorted there. The last one is the drop vault. 
This one's nice if your base gets destroyed, which happens to us quite a bit. Basically, if you get rid of a wall, that that one will fall down. Well, <laughs> normally it would just fall down, but I think because we had the other one sitting there, maybe that's what... Oh, no, it fell down. It's right there. <laughs> I wasn't 100% sure. All right, yeah, but so that, that basically fell down right there, so you don't have to worry about it breaking when it drops. It doesn't get destroyed. It actually falls down, and I think it will go all the way down to the ground. Can I delete that piece without breaking everything? Let's go ahead and find out. Let's go demo. Oh, no, I demoed the wrong one. I meant to demo the foundation. Try one more time. There you go. Boom. There you go. Yep, there you go. It worked. So now this one is down here on the ground instead of there. So if your base gets totally wiped, you don't have to worry about that. So that's the big thing. Now when you come back to the console and we do the manual sort, anything that we added to those lists over there, like the flint, is going to disappear. and It's going to get pushed over there to the proper device. So really, really cool. Just makes it to where once you have it set up, you don't have to do anything else with it. You pretty much just every once in a while come over to the console, do manual sort, and it'll do its thing. It's absolutely awesome. All right, next thing. Let's get into just the individual devices. There's so many of them, so we'll go through them kind of quickly. The big, big one, because we need this to kind of run everything else, is the wireless generator. Works just like any other wireless generator. Throw some gasoline in it, activate the power. And then there's the options in here, just like most of them, where you can do balance generators. You can do increase to maximum, or you can just increase a certain amount. You can pulse the generator range if you're not sure how long it goes. Let's just go ahead and make it max. So make sure it covers everything. And it is a pretty big area. You can see it going way out there. It's going pretty far out. So it definitely can cover most of your base. It works really well. If you use Automated Arc 2, it's not updated anymore. So the generator on Automated Arc 2 doesn't work. But the way to fix that on Arc 2, or on Automated Arc 2, is basically go like this. You go gasoline, drop. And then you use a transfer gun to transfer that to there. So that's kind of how that works. But that's just if you use Automated Arc 2, which, like I said, isn't updated. So it's got a few issues. Uh, the other ones, it's kind of hard to decide how to do this in, the, in order because, like I said, it's six or seven mods all in one. And there's so many different things with it. But let's just talk about some of the more useful devices in this one. The biggest one is probably the Smithicator. The Smithicator pulls all of the Ingrams for everything that you have on the server into here. Now, if you have too many mods, it may have an issue loading some of those, but basically anything that we have, so like we have Dino Storage on here, so it, it should show up. There you go. The Soul Storage stuff will show up in here. The Awesome Teleporter stuff will show up in here. It pretty much, all the things that you can make on the server are going to be available in either this one or in the Smithicator top, and it's kind of separated out by... The, the tier so a lot of the ele electronics and elements stuff like that's gonna be made in this one so very very cool device the smithicator is one of the must-have devices for sure on a server next one's the mortar pestle just works like a mortar pestle but it does do in multiples of I think six so if you if you uh, don't think I have enough to do maybe no we don't even have enough yeah I don't have enough to really make anything inside of there but basically the just works like a pestle but it does does have a little bit higher multiples so really really cool now, next two we don't use quite a bit, but the spoiling bin, just like it sounds, throw a bunch of meat in there. Let's go split half, throw it in there, and then it's going to spoil the meat. The next one is the oil drum, just stores oil in there. Next one is the ice box. This one just increases the spoil timer. So if you guys have, this is kind of like the early stage refrigerator. So throw this in here, and it's going to increase it all the way up to 10 hours. And I think that's I and I adjustable, but I don't remember for sure. Uh, next couple for the food, you have the, the dehydrator and refrigerators and then the feeding trough. And it's a refrigerated feeding trough, so you don't have to worry about stuff going bad inside of here. So click that, click that, and then it's gonna keep that from spoiling for a much longer time. And, and it's gonna feed all your dinos within the area. So very, very cool. And you can see on here, a lot of these, I, I didn't talk about it already, but a lot of these models, he's attributed to other people. I think Howlin, Howlin, I, I'm not sure how you pronounce it, H, H A L L U N, I think it is, and then Myth N7. So these guys have all helped out with some of the models. Refrigerators are just like the OCD vaults. If you go in here and you click this, and we click Add to Resource List, now all fish meat will be sorted here. That way, if you want to sort, you know, meat here, berries here, kibble up top, you can kind of separate it out that way. All right, dehydrator will do after the grill. The grill is obviously where we cook the meat, so we'll throw a bunch of meat on there, and it's going to cook it. And I, I believe it goes in multiple, so it actually goes pretty fast. Make sure it's turned on. Boom. And it's got cool animations, too. A lot of these have really good animations. This is going to cook up the meat for us. And then we're going to take that over to the dehydrator. And then all the cooked meat goes in there. And then that's going to eventually be turned into the jerky. So very, very cool. Next one is the cauldron. Just like the cooking pot. It's got all your cool stuff in it that you can make. And it automatically has water to it. So you don't have to worry about water 
or running water to it or anything like that. So it's really, really cool. It does go off electricity. Veggie crate, just to throw the veggies in there. Kind of the same thing. You can throw things in there and then hit add to resource list. Next one is the kibble station. This one is definitely a must-have, although a lot of times it's probably a good idea to change some of the ingrams for these. But basically, if you have a bunch of eggs, we'll throw eggs in here. You can make the different kibbles. So we have now enough to make one regular kibble. Boom. There you go. We can make kibble that way. It's just based off eggs and water, which it already has water running to it. You don't have to worry about that. Next one is the compost bin and the fertilizer silo. Compost bin, basically, just you, have, you need thatch and feces in here. It's going to turn that into fertilizer, and it works pretty good. The only bad thing about this is you do have to be careful. A lot of times you want to disable thatch pulling because it is very aggressive with the way that it pulls thatch. You'll come back to your base and have no thatch in your entire base quite often. Then once there is some fertilizer, you come over here, you can do pull fertilizer and then fill crops, and it will automatically distribute it evenly across all of your crop plots, whether it's the S-plus crop plots or the AA crop plots. Either one works. Next one is the gardening station. This one's pretty cool. It just allows you to make the crop plots, and then there's a few seeds that are specific to AA. Some really good ones because it kind of helps you with some of these early game supplies that you that are maybe a little harder to find, like like a rare mushroom or rare flower or even the fungal wood. You basically plant one of these, and then you're going to be growing that over time. Very, very cool. Next one is the plant commander. This is obviously so you can put a whole bunch of the, the plants that shoot things on it. We've done this on boats. I think we had a video back on Fjordor where we put a bunch of these on boats. Well, not we did. Our friend Conan did. All right, the next one is the auto crafter. This one's pretty simple. You just put the supplies that you want over here to be made automatically. And then you come over here and you're going to do start production. And then it's going to start crafting those things inside of there. Very cool device. Next one is just the repair station. Just like it sounds, you can repair a bunch of your items, which I don't think I have anything that needs repaired right now. Basically put things inside of there and then you can repair it. Next two are just the industrial forges. These ones are really cool because they can be set up to auto pull and they, actually, it's, they automatically do pull things like raw metal over. And I think you can tell it to stop balance forges, switch to gas and disable pulling. So you can tell it to stop pulling if it's pulling too much metal, but basically it'll always pull the metal and continue to smelt it up for you. Very, very cool. Next one is the chemistry bench, just like your normal chemistry bench, just the automated version of it. Uh, definitely a really cool device. This one is huge, the polymer transmuter. This one's nice because you can throw the polymer on here and then turn this guy on, and then we can convert from that polymer to the regular polymer. There you go. So we can sit there and craft this stuff up here. That one there. There we go. I forget because we have it put onto uh, GCM mode, so all these are showing up like we have it, but you can make the corrupted nodules or you can make the reg regular polymer. So very, very, very cool. Just allows you, especially on maps like Extinction where you get a bunch of these, it's really nice to be able to switch it to the correct version of polymer and that we don't have to worry about it spoiling or anything. So very, very cool on that one. Last one, this is one of my favorite ones. This is the actual grinder. Let's go get something that we need to grind up. This will grind up items for you and then return all of those items back into the rest of the storage over here. So we'll put this inside of here, turn this on. So if we go in here and we put in these foundations, we hit grind all, it's going to grind those and then they'll automatically get pulled. See, they're already getting pulled. It'll get pulled to the correct OCD storage. So if we had stone and the other one put somewhere where they're supposed to, let's go like this. Let's go a little bit of stone, a little bit of wood. If I put these on an OCD storage, it would shift them to the right one as well. Let's go like that. Let's go stone and wood and add to resource list. There you go. Stone and wood will get sorted there now. So we put a bunch of foundations in there, do grind all, and then it'll push those things to the correct OCD storage. If it doesn't, it doesn't always automatically do it. If it doesn't, just run over to the console and hit manual and it'll push it over there. Although, oh, you know what? We actually have it turned off right now. So grinder. Turn that one on. Boom. Close. Now, when we do that grinding, it should automatically pull the stuff out of there. We can also do, it will grind these. Grind all, boom. There you go. And that'll all automatically get sorted as long as you have it turned on inside the console over there. So that's all those devices. Last couple of devices, there is the Genie turret over here. This one I, don't, I haven't really used before, but I assume it's kind of similar to that one. It just controls turrets instead of plants. The last three or four items over here, we have the Ant Hill. This one's pretty cool. You put repellent inside of here. There you go, boom. And then it's gonna automatically go here in just a second. We'll give it a second to do that. While that's doing that, you can put your dinos on this one to get blood bags. This is your blood bag puller. And it's gonna pull, hopefully it doesn't accidentally kill him. I don't wanna accidentally kill him. We did earlier in testing. But it's gonna start pulling blood packs out of this guy. There you go. And you'll see his health start going down here in just a second. 
we're going to pick him up and put him back down again. And then put you over here on the healing one. And then on this one, it'll heal him as long as we have healing brews on here, which I don't have yet. Okay, there we go. This guy needs to be healed up. And we'll go inside here. Pull. And then it'll heal this guy over time. So it's a really cool little station that'll heal up your dinos for you. All right, so that's that. I think that's all the big stuff. Hopefully that covers everything in the mod. I'm sure I missed one or two things. There are some INI options available with these. There's some other cool setup stuff with it, but the main part, as long as you understand these ones, you're good to go. Last thing we didn't really talk about is your egg crates. This literally just picks up eggs, so if we drop all of our eggs, it's going to pick these up for us, although you, by default, it'll pick up regular eggs. In order to do fertilized eggs, you need to enable fertilized pickup, and it'll pick all the eggs up for us, or if you just want them to all hatch, you can hit this, and the incubator will get all these hatched up. Let's see which picks it up first. The... Will they hatch first or they get picked up first? I'm not sure. Oh, my bad. I picked them up, so that didn't really work. But you can see it picked up some of the eggs right there. So it does automatically pick stuff up. This just incubates your eggs. So super simple. All right, guys. That's going to end it. So li literally one of my favorite mods. Automated Arc is absolutely excellent. It is a must-have on every server that we play. I do typically use AA2 because it's one mod, but you have to be warned with that that it's not updated anymore. So it does have a few glitches or problems in it, such as the generator not working and a couple other issues like that. We still use Automated Arc 3 from time to time because of all the improvements in it, but definitely a great mod. Make sure you check it out. Go over there and give the mod developer some love, and if you want to check out his Twitch channel, I'll try to remember to link that down in the first comment. Hope you guys enjoyed it. Huge shout out to the patrons for making these videos possible. It should be Saturday, Sunday, Mod Spotlight videos, back to the playthrough Monday through Friday, and of course we have 7 Days to Die and other stuff on the channel as well. Hope you guys have a great day. Thank you for all the support. See you in the next one.